Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. We're here with another video. So on November 9, Affinity Photo 2 for both the desktop and the iPad was launched. Unlike previous Affinity Photo upgrades, which were always free, you will need to shell out 40 US dollars for Affinity Photo 2. This is the first time a purchase has been required for a new upgrade since 2015 when the first Affinity Photo was launched. This makes Affinity Photo I think one of the most value for money raw editors around. And we are big fans of Affinity Photo in this channel. That being said, we still have to ask the question, should you upgrade to Affinity Photo 2, especially if you use it for raw editing? And that's what we're going to answer in today's video. So let's run through the most important updates for raw editing. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you whether I think you should upgrade. So let's start off with non-destructive raw develop. So to explain what non-destructive raw develop means, let me first show you the old version of Affinity Photo, Affinity Photo 1. So here we have a raw photo and we are on the develop persona. So you can see here that this is a raw photo and it's indicated very clearly in the bar right here. So in the old version of Affinity Photo, once you click the develop button, any changes to the raw image are going to be applied to a processed image and you can no longer go back to the raw image if you want to. So for example, let's demonstrate this here and let's just show you shadows and highlights. So if I move the highlight slider left and right, you can see that I have enormous dynamic range in this raw file. If I move it to the left, a lot of the detail in the sky is shown. And if I move it to the right, you can see that I can brighten the whole thing to a great extent. So let me just lower the highlights here as I would normally do when I'm processing raw. And let me click the develop button. So once I click the develop button, I'm now here in the photo persona where I can do further editing with layers. But of course, as I'm editing, I might change my mind. I might want to make changes in the highlights done to this image. And so I might click on the develop persona here to go back to the raw editing mode. But you can see as I go back to develop persona, this image is no longer a raw file. So this image is now a processed file and it's indicated by RGB. So if you go to the shadows and highlights, you can see that the highlights is set back to zero. It doesn't remember any changes that you've made because these changes have been applied to this new image. And so if I move the slider left and right, you can see the effect is totally different because I'm no longer dealing with a raw file. So if you looked at my other videos on Affinity Photo, especially the Affinity Photo versus Pixelmator video, you can see that I pointed this out. You cannot make further changes to the raw file after you've clicked develop, which is a big pain. And one of the reasons I said Pixelmator was a better option for raw editing. But now with this fix, this disadvantage has been corrected by Affinity. Let me show you now Affinity Photo 2. So here we are in Affinity Photo 2. I'm going to make the same change. And again, this is a raw file. And so I'm going to reduce the highlights here, right? I'm going to click on develop. I can make further changes in the photo persona with layers, but let's say I want to make further changes to the raw file. So if I click on develop persona, you can see that if I move into the highlights and shadows, it actually remembered the highlight position, which means this was the same raw file as before I click develop persona. And if I move the slider left and right, you can see this still the same. It has the full dynamic range of a raw file because this is a raw file. So that gives you a lot more editing latitude and a lot more flexibility. And so that is non-destructive raw develop. So let's move on to the second change. So the second update is live masks. So in Affinity Photo 2, if I'm in photo persona, and I click on the mask layer button, you can see now I have a bunch of options. 
Now, these options were not available in Affinity Photo 1, as you can see. So if I click on Mask Layer button here, you can see it will just create a normal mask here. And so let me talk about the two new mask types under the term Live Masks. So let's start off with the Luminosity Mask. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to first create an adjustment. So let's have an exposure adjustment here. Right, so let's say I want this foreground here, which is extremely underexposed, to be brightened. And let's say I prefer an exposure adjustment here. So let's just brighten that. So there, as you can see, it has been brightened. But as you would predict, this entire thing is applied to the sky as well, which is not what we want. So we can create a mask for that. Now, the traditional way would be to use a masking brush but that would be very prone to error, especially if you, you have very irregularly shaped objects. But with the new Affinity Photo 2, you can create a luminosity mask, which will base the mask on the characteristics of an image. So let's demonstrate that. So I'm just gonna click on mask layer. I'm gonna choose luminosity range mask here. And what I can do here is actually adjust this graph. So right now, this graph is pure white, as you can see here. That's pure white. So you can click on the preview button to see what the mask looks like. If I want it pure black, I can put this curve at the bottom here. And you can see it's all pure black. So what we want is the mask to reveal the details of the shadowy area. So if the image area is dark, you want the mask to be close to white. And if the image area is bright, like the sky, you want the image, you want the mask to be as close to black as possible. So if you watch my video on layers with Affinity Photo, you know that the white portion of the mask will reveal the adjustment. So in this case, we want this foreground, this dark foregro foreground to be white in the mask. So we can do that by creating the curve. So let me move the curve up here, like so. And then I'm just gonna show you a preview. And you can see now that because I put the curve in reverse, the black portions here will now be in white and the white portions are now in black. So you can make adjustments to this curve to further enhance the white and enhance the blacks here. So we can, let's say, lower. And so you can see now that the sky will now be more black here. You can make some more adjustments here. So this works pretty much like a curves uh, adjustment. All right, so this is the, the mask I want. You can see everything here is in white and the sky area here is in black. So as you can see, if I get rid of this and I click on, let's say the exposure adjustment here. So as you can see, if I make the exposure adjustment now, the sky is barely affected while the foreground is significantly affected, which is what I envisioned when I created that luminosity mask. And you will notice that because it's a luminosity mask, it's based on the image itself. You can see that there'll be no halos in this and you can see it's very, it takes very little effort to actually create this. So that is a luminosity mask. Now there is another type of mask available as well, similar to a luminosity mask. And this is called the hue range mask. So let me just create that as well. So I'm just gonna create the mask directly and I'll just choose hue range mask. The hue range mask basically creates a mask based on a specific color and it will allow you to apply adjustments, effects, or just paint on the automatically generated mask for your chosen hue. So basically a hue range mask will create the mask based on a color. So let's just choose a color here. Let's have, let's say the sky, let's say blue. So you can look at, a, you can click on preview here and you can see that those things it deems as blue, it will actually color in white. Now, obviously this one was not very accurate. You can make adjustments in the color wheel and see if it works for you. You can see why this hue range mask is also called a live mask because this mask changes according to what you do to this widget. And you can see it's extremely fast. So kudos to Affinity for being able to make this live mask work really efficiently. Now, all of these live masks are very powerful but it can also be confusing. So I'm gonna be creating a separate video on how to use these live masks.
So the third update to Affinity Photo 2 is the concept of compound masks. So now with Affinity Photo 2, you could actually combine masks together to create a more precise mask. And now the final change and the final update is the redesigned UI. So, so the redesigned UI comes in a few forms. First, when you click new here to create a new document, this has been totally redesigned. So a lot of the common features or the common operations in new document have been added to this sidebar here. And this has been streamlined quite a great deal. If you want to compare it to the previous one, this was the previous one here. So if I click on new, this is what it looked like, right? So not very attractive. A lot of these boxes don't really do much and they cover too much of the screen. So I think this new document dialogue is a big improvement. Other improvements include the design of these widgets have been made slightly larger, which is really good. And they have been redesigned to have more attractive icons. In addition, the adjustment layer icons have been improved to indicate different icons for different types of adjustment layers. So for example, this exposure adjustment now has this sun icon here. If I added in a clarity adjustment, so let me just add a clarity adjustment here. You can see now it has this clarity icon. So it's easier to see which icon you're dealing with at a glance. And uh, as you well know, the way Affinity is designed, you could have a ton of adjustment layers here. The previous version, they just had a white box. So it would not have any indication of what kind of adjustment layer it is. So there you have it. Those were the top new updates for raw editing in Affinity Photo 2. So the last question to be answered is, do I recommend it? Answer is definitely yes. The main reason is the ability to readjust the raw file at any time fixes a major and very weird drawback of the original Affinity Photo. No other photo editor has this problem where you, you can't re-edit or readjust the raw file at any time. Even Pixelmator Pro allows you to readjust the raw at any time. So this fix alone brings Affinity Photos raw editing to 2022 and makes Affinity Photo 2 so much more useful. The luminance and hue adjustment live masks are also genuinely powerful. They allow you to create precise masks, which are more difficult to do with other raw editors. As for the interface, I don't really think it was much of a change at all. And I do believe that Affinity Photo should have done more work on improving its complicated UI. I think the criticism that for such a major upgrade, the changes to the UI were very, very minimal is, I think, a fair criticism. That being said, that doesn't change my view that this upgrade is a must if you're doing any sort of raw editing with Affinity Photo. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, I'd really appreciate if you like, subscribe, and share this content to help keep the videos coming. And till the next video, I'll be seeing you in the next one. Bye for now.